Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and welcome to AP Chemistry Unit 3, Section 7. In this section, we're going to be learning about mixtures and how we talk about concentration of those mixtures. Now, before we jump into solutions, we need to remember that mixtures are materials that contain more than one substance. And so we might think of a salad, that's a mixture, or a cheeseburger, or a hamburger, that's a that's a mixture. Or if you think of Kool-Aid or some other solution, salt dissolved into water, that's a mixture. Now, there are two types of mixtures. The first type is a heterogeneous mixture. And that's a mixture in which the individual components of that mixture are visible to the naked eye. And those individual components, we call those phases. So for example, if you're looking at a salad, I suppose we could say that the lettuce would be one of the phases and the tomatoes would be another phase and the, uh, the cucumbers would be another phase. Heterogeneous mixtures have phases that you can see with the naked eye. Now, the other type of mixture, this is the one that we're going to, going to be focusing on in most of this section homogeneous mixtures. These are mixtures where the components have been mixed together so well everything is uniform all the way through. What that means is you cannot see the individual components with the naked eye. So if you have Kool-Aid or salt dissolved in water, you cannot see the little specks of Kool-Aid powder or in the salt water you cannot see the little crystals of salt because they've been dissolved so uniformly throughout the whole mixture. That's what homogeneous means. Everything is uniform throughout the whole uh, vo volume of the mixture. We call homogeneous mixtures solutions. That's another word for these and that's a word that we're probably going to use much more commonly. We normally think of solutions as being a solid dissolved in a liquid it's not always the case. Sometimes they are perhaps uh, several gases essentially dissolved into each other, like air. Air is a good example of a solution that contains pretty much all gases. We can think of solids as being solutions as well. Alloys. We talked about alloys in a previous lesson. Those are solutions because they are solids that have been mixed together and everything is uniform throughout that. Think about brass, you know, sterling silver. It is uniform. You can't see the individual uh, uh, parts or, or phases of that. So uh, solutions, uh, there are lots of types of solutions. In this course, we're mainly going to be focusing on solids dissolved into liquids. And generally speaking, the liquid that we're going to be using is water almost all of the time. Now, one of the most useful ways for talking about a solution is to think about its concentration. When we say concentration, that's how much solute is dissolved into the solvent. The solute is the usually the solid in, in, in most cases and the solvent is the, the medium into which the solid or the, the solute gets dissolved. Most of the time, like I said, the solvent is water. There are lots of units for concentration. Formality is actually the name of one. A molality is another name. Uh, percent by mass is another one. Uh, molarity, percent by volume, normality. These are all very good ways of talking about concentration. Now, in this class, in AP Chemistry, we're going to spend most of our effort thinking about molarity. Now, all those other uh, units or ways to describe concentration are good as well, but we're going to focus on molarity in AP Chemistry. Now, the way that we calculate the molarity is with this equation right here. Molarity equals the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution in your, in your solution. And if you use that equation, you can calculate molarity very easily. Now, that's the primary unit of solution concentration. There are other contexts in which we use the others, but like I said, in this course, and in most of chemistry, molarity is a very important unit. 
And so that's how we're going to solve this. Let's, let's solve a problem. Let's say we have a student that produces a solution by adding 0.711 grams of tin 2 chloride to enough distilled water to make 75.0 milliliters of solution. Calculate the molarity of this solution. So once again, it's moles divided by liters. So we have to take the 0.711 grams of tin 2 chloride that we have given to us and convert that to moles before we can actually do our calculation. So let's do that. And that means that in our conversion factor, grams have to go on the bottom. We'll put one mole on top. We can use our periodic table here to find out how many grams are in one mole of that stuff. And when you add it together, one tin atom and two chloride atoms, I get a total of about 189.62 grams in one mole of that substance. So when I divide this out, I get 0 0.00375 moles. Now, since it's moles divided by liters, I have to take this mole value that I just calculated and divide it by liters. Now, not milliliters, I have to convert it. So 75 milliliters is the same as 0 0.0750 liters. So when I divide that out, I get an answer that the molarity is about 0 0.0500 molar. So that's how you solve molarity. These are calculations that you should be able to do fairly uh, simply fairly straightforward. Let's try another one. In this case, a chemist dissolved 2.556 grams of zinc chloride in enough distilled water to produce 250.0 milliliters of solution. What is the molarity of this solution? So once again, we're going to have to take the gram value that's given to us here and convert that to mole. So we take the 2.556 grams of zinc chloride we have to use our periodic table again to convert that to moles. So grams on bottom, one mole on top. And when I add one zinc and two chlorines together, I get about 136.31 grams per mole of that substance. So when I divide this out, I get 0 0.01875 moles. That's how many moles I have. Now the next step, of course, is to calculate molarity by taking moles divided by liters. So I have moles. How many liters do I have? Well, move that decimal point three places over, and it's 0 0.2500 liters. So when I divide this out on my calculator, I should get an answer of about 0 0.07500 molar. So that's how you calculate molarity of a solution. Now, sometimes you're given the molarity and you're given either the grams or moles and the volume and you have to solve for the other one. So here's an example like that. A small beaker contains 50.00 milliliters of 0 0.250 molar sodium hydroxide solution. If the solution is allowed to dry, how many grams of sodium hydroxide solid can be retrieved? So we're just trying to figure out how many grams of sodium hydroxide are essentially locked up into this solution. All we have to do is, first of all, convert to moles, just like we did before. So we're going to start with our 50 milliliters, but we need to write that in liters. It's 0 0.05000 liters. And we're going to use molarity as a conversion factor. Now this is something that we're going to do later on when we're talking about reactions and how solutions can react sometimes. So in my conversion factor, I'm going to put liters on the bottom and I'm going to put moles on top since I'm converting to moles. Now notice that 0 0.250 molar means 0 0.250 moles per liter. So I can actually put these numbers into the conversion factor. I'm actually using the, the molarity as a conversion factor here. So I'm going to cancel liters, and when I multiply these numbers by each other, I find out that it's 0 0.0125 moles. So once I have moles, I can convert to grams fairly easily. Now there is a shortcut here, and I, I'm bringing this up because 
We're going to be doing a lot of this type of calculation once we get into acid-base titrations and solution chemistry later on. Molarity times liters equals moles. I'm not sure how much of a shortcut that is, but if you remember that and you just take the molarity times liters, that's a very quick way to get the moles. You know, just take the 0.05 times 0.25 and you'll get the same answer, which is essentially what we did, but you just need to remember that. Moles equals molarity times liters. Now, once we have moles, we can, of course, convert to grams, and we just take the 0 0.0125 moles of sodium hydroxide, and we're going to convert that to grams, and, of course, we use our, our periodic table for that. So moles on the bottom, grams on top, and when you add these together, it's about 40 grams per mole of this substance. So when you cancel moles and multiply, 0 0.0125 times 40 gets us about 0 0.500 grams of sodium hydroxide. So if you take that solution and allow it to dry out, you can expect to retrieve about half a gram of sodium hydroxide solid. That's how you would solve that. It's just using the definition of molarity. Now, let's take a look at another example with molarity. This is a very common case that uh, we have in the laboratory, especially those of us who have to make solutions for, for a class, for a lab. A chemist needs to produce 500.0 milliliters of 0 0.250 molar hydrochloric acid solution. How many milliliters of concentrated 12.0 molar hydrochloric acid solution should be used to create the desired solution? This is a very common example that we uh, carry out in the laboratory. We purchase acid and a lot of uh, solutions for that matter in concentrated bottles. So maybe I have a bottle of concentrated acid and we use that to dilute it down and make uh, more dilute solutions that we might use for a class in chemistry. So the first thing that you want to do is, just like we always do, convert to moles. So I'm going to take the 500 milliliters, which is uh, half a liter, and multiply that by 0 0.250 molar of the solution to get the number of moles. So when I do that, I find that I need 0.125 moles of the acid solution. So with that, I'm going to take the moles and I'm going to determine the volume. Now, we know that molarity equals moles divided by liters. We can rearrange this equation just using simple algebra to where it looks like this. Liters equals moles divided by the molarity. Just this, It's the same equation, just uh, rearranged. Now, I'm trying to find the volume. The moles, well, we just calculated that, 0.125, and the molarity of our original solution is 12 molar. So when you divide that out, you get an answer of 0 0.0104 liters. Now the question was, how many milliliters? So we have to multiply this by 1,000, and we get that it's 10.4 milliliters. So that's another type of problem with the dilution. Now, some folks have a little trouble remembering which molarity to use when, and when to do which step. There's another equation that actually makes this even easier. And, oh, just as a caution, never add water directly to concentrated acid. Always add acid to water. There is a shortcut. And this is, this is the equation. It's M1V1 equals M2V2. And this is what I call the dilution equation. All you have to do is plug the numbers into the equation and you will solve and get the right answer every time. So in this case, the starting molarity is 0 0.250 molar. And by the way, it doesn't matter what you call the ones and the twos. In this case, it's, I suppose it's actually the ending molarity is 0 0.250 molar. And the volume of that stuff is 500.0 milliliters. The other molarity, in this case the starting molarity, is 12.0, so I plug that in there, and I'm trying to find the volume of that, so V2 is my unknown. 
And so I just use simple algebra to solve for this, and I get the exact same answer. In fact, I don't even have to convert to liters. If I put milliliters in for V1, my V2 will be in milliliters as well. So it's the same answer, but I think this is a little bit easier. So I hope you learned something about types of mixtures and how we work with solutions and the molarity calculation as well. If you learned something, please shoot me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we are moving on to Unit 3, Section 8. Thanks for watching.